Where, where are you? This is uh, Long Island, New York, Nassau Community College's radio station. All right, cool. Awesome. And we're talking about Christian, obviously, in his video. and Yes. It's going to be 95% you know, music-based questions and whatnot. And 5% talking about my penis? or what? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, John, quick question, actually. Uh, did you do... Uh, the drums on this song as well or just direct the video just the video Christian uh, was too good you know he, I, play, I could play a good drum so I did it myself you can't afford me uh, <laughs> well, just, All what's right. your name man my name's Justin Justin okay this is uh, you Long Island, you said? yes sir alright you guys ready yeah alright I'm here talking with Rock Royalty. I've had the pleasure of interviewing his dad. I've seen him perform with Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, the Beach Boys, on multiple occasions. And now he's got a brand new album, Only Alibis, with a track that I've been playing on repeat some, some, summer. Welcome to the show, Christian Love. Also, John Stamos is here. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. That's funny. What's your name, Justin? Yes, sir. Uh, you okay. know, I always get so starstruck and, and nervous when, when doing interviews. Um, is there a time in your life that you could think of where, where you couldn't believe that you were meeting this person? Like, wow, I'm in the same room as, as so-and-so. Yeah, right now with you. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> I can't believe I'm meeting Justin from Long Island. <laughs> um, are you asking me or Christian? Yeah, both of you guys. Uh, maybe Vince Vaughn. I thought that was kind Vince of cool, oh. a cool moment. I brought him to... One of those shows. Is it Lanner or something? Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Well, it's truthfully, the Beach Boys, man, you know, they were my, still are my all time favorites, my heroes. And when I, um, I was, I, I, it was around this time I was, I was about 19 or so. I had this girlfriend, I was madly in love with her. And I walked in and I caught her in bed with Tony Danza. True story. Yeah. It's in my book. I've heard that. I was so depressed over that that my friend Jeff Fosquette, who was playing with the Beach Boys at the time, um, said, come out to this show and, um, in San Diego, we're playing at the Jack Murphy Stadium and after the baseball game. And and I said, Grant, I said, I'll try to introduce you to the guys. As soon as fun, fun, fun enters, get your ass backstage. Here's a pass. And, um, you know, they're, they're back there for like 10 minutes and then they go back and do an encore. Then they leave. So make sure you're there. So I get onto the field and all of a sudden, I'm like newly minted teen idol. And all of a sudden, I hear all these screams. All this, I'm like, what the hell is going on? And there were all these cheerleaders screaming at me. And I was like, oh, and I just started running like an idiot. And I'm running the bases. And I'm like this skinny kid with these Jordan-ass jeans. And it looked like I had a dead crow on my head. <laughs> and I look up on the jumbotron in there. I'm like running like this. And these girls are gaining. on me. And I get right backstage. And they slam the door. And girls are screaming. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like sweating. I look up at all the Beach Boys. My heroes are just looking at me like, who is this crazy, you know? <laughs> And they hung out with men. So uh-huh. that's, 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 <laughs> um, and, uh, that was it. I mean, it's like I got to me. And then Mike said, uh, who's that? Foss gets up. That's Stamos. He plays drums and he's on General Hospital. Mike says, um, do girls always uh, scream and chase him like that? He said, yeah. He goes, get a monster. <laughs> and I played Bob Rand at the end. And I, was, I haven't been able to get rid of me since. But, but when I was in the room with them, and still, Bruce Johnson's sitting right here. I'm in awe. Oh, Bruce is right there. That's awesome. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> I've got to see. Uh, Please stop. Turn me back. To- <laughs> you want to say about Bruce? Uh, I've got to see Bruce live uh, on multiple occasions, and uh, he always kills it. You know, with the the Disney Girls track and uh, everything that he's done with the band. He's, he's you know a Beach Boy in my heart always. He was kind enough to sing uh, Disney Girls at my wedding. Uh, my wife loves that song. And yeah. Comes I gotta say something because uh, Christian's too humble. Yeah. He and I, uh, besides writing, are two of the background singers on the Weekends album that's out now called Dawn FM. Really? One of the writers. One of the writers that right good? there. Right there. Did you guys? Um, you guys sang on that too, right? Yeah, we wrote it. Sang. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Christian. He is uh, sort of the because he's so humble and quiet. His musical talent is is much bigger and much stronger and much more of a presence in this band than than you know he may lead on because he's just uh, and you know he's. I mean, I won't speak for you, but, you know, you got your dad who's there, you know, so Christian's kind of always back. But with this song, it was so damn good. And we asked, we kept bugging Mike to play it in the show, put it on the set list, which he has, and it sounds great. And then he said, will you do a video? And I said, absolutely. I've known him since he was a 
little guy and any chance i get to promote him and just highlight his talent I, I jump at so and what better guy to have do your video than john stamos yeah <laughs> john ha- have you done any uh directing before john or is this the first because uh, i know uh dave coulier directed some episodes of fuller house I, I don't think you directed anything on there more of a producer role is this the first direction you've done no i have directed a lot of stuff in fact i directed a couple of beach boy videos i directed um hot fun in the summertime which was in the the 90s or something we were at, we should it, it's it's kind of a fun video we shot at the back lot of uh, universal in florida I mean, girls and kids um but you know a lot of that was a lot of it was just editing and stuff we, we we shot some footage at um at his house in tahoe or his dad's house in tahoe and then we just started gathering stuff on the on the road but i just wanted to find a way to really highlight his talent and i think that video does it pretty well yeah the one uh, everyone's been talking about is how we did it. We shot the stuff on the stage, and then we shot me sitting out in the theater with my guitar, yeah, sort of watching what I was doing on stage, kind of thing. Yeah, didn't have a lot of time. More, you know, for the next song, we'll shoot the real video and stuff. But... And you know, we mentioned that you know, Christian's father being Mike Love, and uh, you know, maybe having a father like that. Do you think that? Uh, you know, because there's a lot of second generation performers that are out there. Do you think having that shadow has that been something that has been, you know, a burden at times? Not a burden, but like difficult to sort of step out and be your own, you know, person? Uh, probably not, because you're going to be your own person anyways. So I think, if anything, it's it's um, enabled me to get out in the public eye a lot more. So, and I just enjoy playing with the band. So. It's been great. But you, you've come a long way with that because I think, if I may speak, say, I mean, you know, in the beginning, and how long have you been playing? Playing that twenty years. Well, since yeah, two thousand six. Yeah, I mean, I think there was times when it, it, you bumped up against you, and you wanted to do your own thing, and you were playing. He had his own band too, and sometimes he'd open up, which was great, or sometimes you'd go see him at clubs, and he'd be playing his own style, which was more sort of reggae and you know, kind of reggae or, rock. Yeah. yeah. And then I was really, and then, you know, like all of us, we fight our. Or pass or baptism, whatever that's about. I mean, I couldn't wait to get so far away from Full House. But then, you know, it comes to a point where you're like, well, why? You know, embrace like, it. Embrace it and, and use it. And I think that's what you're doing right now. First of all, we get the pleasure of getting to play with you every night and see you on stage. And he sings God Only Knows. And he's, he's really a, a real underrated talent. And um, that that's a so- tough, speaking of shadows to, you know, to overcome i mean god only knows uh, i had a question about carl wilson because you know he sang that song uh sort of doesn't get the appreciation i think uh that he deserves i think he has one of the greatest voices in music history uh i know john you you had interactions with him and i'm sure you know christian you have as well is there anything about carl wilson that maybe we don't know about or you know behind the scenes what was the guy like Oh, he's just probably like the sweetest guy I've ever met, to be honest. He was as I mean, ethereal and sweet as his voice sounded. Bruce, you spent a lot of time with Carl. What tell us? Carl taught me all the vocal parts as I was joining the band. He was humble, he was loyal, he volunteered. For anybody having trouble singing, if, uh, he volunteered and sang the part, and we just put up. Yeah, I think I think talent wise, I think, like he was incapable of singing that tune. Was you can hear? I'm capable of singing. That. Yeah, me too. I'm talking that tune right now. Uh, Christian really has. I mean, it's in your DNA too, right? So he does a wonderful job on that song. Carl, I felt I felt Carl was under. Um, you're saying underrated, but also under appreciated in the documentary. The documentary is very good, by the way. I think it's a great. A positive look at the band. It shows Mike's contribution in a in a very positive, uh, well deserved way. I think because he sometimes we can slide it on a lot of it. But um, Carl, I think was un- underserved. I would have loved to see Jerry Beckley on there talking about Carl and some of that stuff too. Yeah, do you think the documentary maybe was a little too short? I mean, to tell the story of this band, I mean, I think this should have been, you know, a six-part series. I, I think uh, that's the problem with documentaries, you know, they, they can't tell the whole story of, of such an iconic band. I mean, it's still good, like you mentioned, but I think it could have been more. Well, they specifically stopped in the 80s, so, you know, I think it's they're still open. It's got to be a part two or something. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. I don't know. I think they I don't know. But at least there's something good and positive out there yeah. that shows 
the you know mostly the good stuff about the band. I mean, everybody focuses on the darker side of the Beach Boys in these documentaries, these books and stuff. But this is why not? You know, it was all true. It was all a lot of positivity. I mean, this world. I feel like those songs. I mean, not to talk about the Beach Boys, not you, but the, like those songs were written for this exact moment in time where we really need positivity and optimism, and, and that's what Some Some Summer is too. I mean, it's a really up simple, yes. Yeah joyous yeah um so i'm i'm just gonna assume that christian your influences growing up would be a lot with your father you know influencing you with your music is there somebody else that we might not know of is there an artist or a band that really inspired your musical stylings we're big into Liberace uh, for many, many years. <laughs> i don't know if you've told anybody yet but since okay. i've known him Liberace was his main <laughs> right yeah of course i like the opera a lot um, no, actually, bands like The Police, uh, U2, In Excess, I was kind of inspired by those bands in the 80s. And then I've had lots of uh, influences from the 90s as well. But um, I just pull from a different, a lot of different stuff. I like a, li- a wide variety of music. So I'm going to throw out a, a hypothetical question. Now, you guys have had the honor and privilege of playing with the Beach Boys. If you could play with one artist or band all time dead or alive who are you guys picking to jam out with oh, that's a tough question hmm. what would you go with you go first i was i'm glad that i um i would honestly i i would love to play with elton john i like mm. that's a good show a lot i never let him, like the stones yeah that'd be cool i guess the beatles but the elton would be my favorite player. i'll go with the stones then stones yeah, great answers yeah. Are you a musician? I, I, I dabble here and there. I'm nowhere on, on your guys' level. Hey. I would want to play with uh, Jim Croce. I feel like no one talks about Jim Croce. I, I had the pleasure of interviewing his son, AJ, and I just think Jim is lost in the shuffle of, of rock history. Like, nobody talks right. about him. They know his music, but they don't sure. talk about him. Oh, Leroy. Okay. Um, I want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, your dad just a little bit more, Mike Love, uh, because I mentioned I got to speak with him. And you sort of mentioned how this documentary, you know, painted him in in a positive light. But there has been a lot of division with Beach Boy fans, and I never got it because, you know, I, I saw both versions. I've seen Brian live, you know, four or five times. I've seen Mike's version of the band four or five times. Um, do you think that your dad gets sort of a negative spin on, on his character and just like he gets a lot of unnecessary backlash and maybe not the recognition that he deserves because he's as important to the Beach Boys, I think, as, as any member of the band. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely a lot of haters out there, but there's also, in our world, there's a lot of adoration for him and appreciation. And they realize, you know, how much work he's put into this organization to yeah. keep it together for all these years keeping the summer life. so uh i would say it's weighed more on the positive side than on the negative side i think overall. the tides changing a little bit and i think yeah. that special certainly helped a lot because i used to always tell mike's like don't you don't need to like if there's a way for other people to um to brag about you let that happen like don't you know i mean look here's it's very simply you know, it would be, you probably don't have kids, Justin, but like his kids were basically taken away from him, not this one, but those songs. And, you know, he helped Brian get the publishing back on all that stuff. They went to him and said, could you help us, you know, win this war, the thing against Irving Alamo or wherever the publisher. And, and Mike said, yeah, but I just would like credit on a couple of things that I got, you know, no credit on. They go, okay. And then Brian wins and Mike, they don't give Mike what they promised. So then he had to sue and he, and he won. So a lot of that was, he he has been villainized, villainized a lot over the years. And I don't, uh, sometimes, it, you know, sometimes it, he'll, he'll say it, he'll say, well, I'll say, he sticks his foot in his mouth sometimes. But, but out of like, how frustrating would it be to have your songs taken away from you? And you and he, here's the thing about Mike too, is, is he loves Brian. He loves his cousin. And you saw in the documentary, I think it's the highlight of the whole thing when he says, Frank Marshall asked him, what would you do if, if Brian walked in right now? I said, I can just tell him how much I love him. And I think that was my favorite part of the documentary. And I really feel the documentary shows like, yes, Mike was a big, you know, just as important as anybody in that band. And I heard Carl say it to me one time. He said, he didn't understand why they had to push the rest of the band down to bring Brian up. So we would have, you know, we would bring him up. Um, 
Mike wrote the hooks to the songs, and there's no denying it. Round, round, get around, I get around. I'm picking up good vibrations. Um, Aruba, Jamaica, ooh, with those hooks, you know. Exactly. No, I, I, I'm 100% behind that. I, I hate seeing the infighting, and and I also hate seeing that the fans have this division. You know, when I interviewed your dad, I gave him an idea, and he, he never went with it, but I told him to write a parody for Kokomo called Wokomo and just go you know, <laughs> to, against all of his haters. So uh, maybe, maybe Weird Al could get around to that. But you know what? That's what gets him in trouble, Justin. Yeah. Like doing that. He needs to sit back and let us say how great he is, and I think that's where he's at now, right? Yeah, exactly. We can go wake him up. He's in the back of the bus. <laughs> I mean, these days we're playing some of the biggest shows in a long time, so it's been really great. Yeah, coach. Yeah, eight thousand people. Eight thousand people. Yeah. It's because people are craving this music. I always say it's, decency is at an all-time high and uh, all-time low, and Discord at an all-time high. People, like, thank God we have the Beach Boys music to get us through, to listen, to feel uh, optimism, right? When the whole world in the 60s wanted to be us, I contribute a lot of that to Mike, the band, and then Mike's lyrics, which were, you know, this tableau of, of uh, you know, girls and cars and sunshine and love and positive good vibrations fun 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 you know i mean the beach boys are my favorite band so i i just getting to talk with you guys about your experiences playing with them is is such a pleasure and i know the beach boys are going to be on long island later this year at jones beach which is always a fun spot i know john you perform there uh for the 50th anniversary i remember seeing you perform there um what does long island mean what is playing at, in new york is that is that a special place is jones beach a, a, an important place for the beach boys because it seems like every other year you guys are there i th- I, I love I, lo- I think i played there even before the fifty, get the Paramount. The Paramount. What's the Paramount? I'll, I'll play there too. Oh, Long Island. Oh yeah, we play that. Some. Yes, the Paramount's a great club. It's yes. like a small place there, right? Long Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Paramount in Huntington is a, a place where I saw Mike and, and Bruce and uh, and Christian a, a few years ago. For sure. Yeah, because that's really intimate. You know, this kid friend of mine who's a uh, who I saw on Instagram, uh, Grayson Recruitman. He's from Long Island. He's a great drummer. He's on tour now with Supple Tour. I found, you know, we were making some band changes. And we couldn't find someone to replace the drummer, old drummer we had here, because had he had to sing and play great. And, all. and we were down to the wire, and no one was available. Couldn't find the right person. And I was scrolling Instagram, and I saw this guy John Bolton who plays with us now. I was like, "That's it. That's the guy." <laughs> he gets the gig from being on. Instagram. That's how you got it. Wow, crazy. Um, but John, are you going to be there? I'm, I'm never miss a Beach Boys show. So, are you going to be there, John? I am. Awesome. We, want, we also want you to say hi to John. Oh, yeah. John, John Wiedemeyer. How hi. are you? Just sure. brother. I'm one of the new guys. <laughs> He's our lead guitarist. Awesome. Yes. Great player. Great guy. I'm the noisy one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, what's next for you, Christian, as far as your music goes? You have this new album that you know just came out. Um, are you working on anything else? Are you going on a solo tour? Or are you just sort of riding along with the band and, and you know, playing your, your song with the, you know, with the Beach Boys? Well, the problem with that is there's no time for my own solo tour because we're so busy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to charge you guys the little shoot. Yeah. How many, how many shows is it? Yeah, about 150 shows with this band. So, yeah, there's really no time to set up a tour for myself, but I do have another album that's about, that I'm going to drop maybe towards the end of the summer. So, awesome. I'm working on that. Well, I'd love to have you back on, um, you know, when that next album comes out, we can help promote that here at WHPC. WHPC. John, I, I I I know you get a million full house questions, but I'm never going to have this opportunity. And I've gone through every podcast, every interview, and I've seen every question that's been asked. So I want to come up with something that John Stamos has never been asked before. So here we go. <laughs> and and Christian, I need your answer as well. So okay. who would win in a fight between Uncle Jesse? Joey, Danny? no, <laughs> Joey, Danny Tanner, Uncle Jesse, triple threat match. You know who's taking the the, the championship belt? Because I I think I I personally think that you know you mess with Jesse's hair, he's going to turn into the Incredible Hulk. I think Danny he has that kryptonite of of dirt. If you throw germs at him, he's done. So who do, who do you got? Who do you got, John Stamos? Jo- Joey's thick. So. <laughs> Bob is but you're scrappy. You'd be scrappy. I'm scrappy, yeah, I guess. But he's right. If he starts 
in my hair, that would, you know, I would really look great. Well, Justin, yeah, that's, yeah, no one's ever asked that question. Well, I'm glad. Um, that's a good one. Because, you know, you hear, you hear the same stuff all the time. Uh, <laughs> where where can we find you on social media, Christian? Is there somewhere uh, that, that we can look for you to promote you? Uh, Christian Love Official on Instagram is one of them. Okay. And, and then Christian the, Love Official. And the album is everywhere. And I mean, I, I heard it on. And I heard the album on Spotify. Is it is it basically everywhere, like Apple and Spotify yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, it's on all the Deezer, iTunes, Apple Music. It's on all the platforms. And do you plan on doing a, a physical re- release? Is it going to be uh, like an album, a record? Yeah, or? I've been selling the uh, the CDs at shows actually. Oh, awesome, awesome. And so John, your your social media is I'm, everyone knows. You uh, and, <laughs> Scott Bale at Scott Bale at Scott Bale. <laughs> All right, th- thank you guys so much. This is, you know, a once in a lifetime thing. I-, I couldn't thank you more. Thank you. And when he when he said Thanks that we're going to talk us. to you, I'd be like, I'd love to promote him. I know we've talked about a lot of things, but this kid, uh, we all love him. I especially me. He's like a little brother to me. And yeah, I'm just so proud of him. He's out there, you know, writing songs and recording songs. He I'm, played a song the other day. It was so beautiful that that lullaby song. Um, so any chance you get to see Christian live come out to the Beach Boys shows he's playing or one of his songs as we spoke about and also um, um, on on my social media I, we, with the videos on there for Sub Sub Summer and if you want to have a great day start it with that song and that video Sub Sub Summer and I promise the day is going to go great plus Hell yeah. a lot of big- <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's a nice throwback to, to 80s sort of music videos. Pretty girls. I thanks, pal. All right, have a good one. Good luck. I'll see you guys this summer. See you in Jones Beach. Have a good one. Bye.